So, I built a shotgun axe. It's a metal 3D printed axe that uses high pressure gases from a shotgun shell to blow wooden logs apart. And as weird as the concept sounds, I gotta tell you, it works pretty well. Here's the thing, I have no idea why. This video was brought to you by Onsep. My theory is that for it to work properly, I need to heat the lock perfectly at a 90 degree angle with just enough force so that the blade that contains the exhaust ports gets stuck into the wood in a way that seals itself enough to create enough pressure for the wood to go. This design is not great for that, because it's wide and straight. Normally an axe has a curved blade that makes it easier to penetrate the wood. I said penetrate. Um, Anyway, uh, I modified the old design to have a curved blade, and just like I did before, I'm gonna use this service called JLC3DP to 3D print the axe head in stainless steel. Now, as you might have noticed, the blade is looking a little bit square, and the reason for that is that JLC doesn't allow me to 3D print bladed stuff, because it's considered a weapon. Trust me, that's not the weapon part of it. But I'm telling you this because to get the parts made and through customs, I had to put them down as stainless connectors. Which is not a complete lie, I mean, they are stainless and they do connect. I also made this design which has an arrowhead shaped blade because arrows are good at penetrating and just like I said before, penetration is important. Anyway, the parts should take about a week to get made and get here. So in the meantime, I need to resolve another small issue. Just a tiny detail. Um, I don't have any more shotgun shells. Yeah, I talked about this before, but where I live is not easy to get them. The last time I got lucky because my uncle has a hunting license and gave me a box. But those get spent, you know? And after watching the last video, I don't think my uncle is giving me anything else. So I was thinking about what I could use as a replacement, and it needs to be cheap, legal, and most importantly, explode aggressively. And I think I got it. I think the answer was always staring me in the face. Water. Water is H2O, right? Two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. And as it turns out, those three together burn phenomenally well. Trust me, I know. The thing is, water is water, not explosive, is wet. So to separate it into our ingredients, we need to bombard it with electricity, which I know it sounds complicated, but it's not really. You just need to make the water conductive with some light, put two pieces of metal in it, and run electricity through the now not so drinkable water. Do you see the bubbles? That's hydrogen and that's oxygen. And if you collect it and put a flame to it, it goes this is the propellant you find inside a shotgun shell and as you can see it burns pretty quickly it burns at around two inches per second well hydrogen and oxygen burn at a rate of 80 inches per second and that is at atmospheric pressure when it transitions into a detonation it can reach speeds much higher than the speed of sound I actually built an oxyhydrogen generator before, a while ago, but it wasn't great. For starters, I didn't use stainless steel, and because of that, the plates rusted faster than the hydrogen burns. Also, I messed up in the way I built it. I made these thin steel discs, and to isolate the negative ones from the positive ones, I made bigger holes so they wouldn't touch the threaded rods. Except, the entire thing was already filled with conductive water, so the little spaces didn't do much. This time, I got some stainless! And I'm building what is called a dry cell. Um, I watched a tutorial, we should be fine. Oh crap, no. Got a sandy plate for maximum surface area. Now we're gonna intercalate one of these red rubber seals that took way too much time to cut with a steel plate with a lot of surface area. And uh, now we just keep going, you know? So, 
As you can see I have 7 plates and 7 spaces between them. For each cell I only need about 2 volts to split the water, so in total I need about 12 volts. Any more than that is excess energy that is going to eat up the water and turn it into steam. What? I don't remember this being this loud. Because the new X hats didn't arrive yet, uh, I'm gonna do some tests with the good old boy. I think I messed up big time. Yeah, so I did some calculations and a shotgun shell has precisely 1.4 grams of propellant, which, when it burns, decomposes into 1.4 liters of hot gas. It occupies more or less the space inside of a soda bottle. Now, my axe has internal channels with 40 milliliters of space through which these gases travel. Because these channels have much less space than a soda bottle, these gases get compressed, which increases the pressure and makes the log go boom. On the other hand, the 40 milliliters of oxyhydrogen that I can inject into the axe burn to produce a measly 300 milliliters of gas, which is about 5 times less gas and pressure. Which means, I was fooled by the loud bang the oxyhydrogen puts out. Sure, it burns fast, but has little to no power. What that means is that my beautifully perfect solution doesn't work. It also means that I spent a week building that generator for nothing. You idiot. You know better than this. You do the math before the build. <sighs> I can't believe I made such a dumb mistake. I deserve to be hit by a truckload of tomatoes. And the best part is, I don't even have any shells now. Sponsor time. Hi, before I build anything, I like to draw a 3D model. I don't like to do math apparently, because I'm a moron. I use Onshape, which is a great in-browser app that you don't even need to download. You can basically use it in anything that has a browser, like your computer, your phone, even your smart fridge. Or can you? I don't know. I didn't check beforehand, because I'm a colossal ignoramus. Onshape is smooth and can handle super complex assemblies. Also, it has integrated simulation that can be used by proper engineers to test their designs before they build them, unlike the human fallacy in front of you. Onshape is as much a great tool for professional engineers as it is for disgusting philistines like myself. So, be a better person. Grab Onshape using the link in the description below. Professional engineers get Onshape Professional free up to six months. I think I calmed down. I might grab a snack. Bonjour. It seems like my steel connectors have arrived. Let's take a look. Look at that. As per usual, the quality seems pretty good. As you can see, I have one arrowhead and one circular head that I need to sharpen. So let's do that. So last time I kind of eyeballed the sharpening. I used the grinder. Not a great idea. This time though, I'm using these 3D printed jigs. They fit on the axe head and I can use them as reference. Also, I'm not using the grinder. I'm using this metal file. Let's get going. I'm realizing now that this is gonna take a while. Okay, you got me. I used the angle grinder again. So what? It's so much easier. Yeah, that's the only excuse that I have. And if I'm confessing anyway, I used the belt sander for the curved one. There we go. And even like that, it took me six hours for both of them. Six hours. I'm not cut out for that. I don't have the muscles. If I did, I wouldn't be building a shotgun axe. So the axe heads are finally sharpened and mounted on their respective handles. And I have a little bit more of good news. So not only my uncle did not see my video, which now that I think about it, rude, but also it was my birthday recently. Can you guess what I asked as a gift? Oh yeah, baby, we're back in business. This is gonna be fun. Now I just uh, need to fix one more thing.
So the last time I built this trigger mechanism from some machine parts and a brass pipe adapter, it had a magnet holding the plunger and when the axe hit the log, the plunger would release and hit this pin here and trigger the primer. It's a simple solution, but it's too reliant on the amount of force I hit the logs with for it to work. And by that I mean it didn't work a lot of the times. I'm imagining some kind of mechanism that uses a hammer powered by a spring to hit the shell. And this way I'm gonna have exactly the same amount of impact every single time. Also, it would be nice to have like a lever that I can push and in one movement gets the spent shell out, it reloads the hammer and it makes it easier for me to load a new shell into the axe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump on Onshape, concoct a solution and rock and roll. So this is more or less what I had in mind. So here's the lever. If I pull it up, it loads the hammer and it pulls the shell out. So I can switch it and then pull it back down and when I hit with the axe, this goes a little bit here, releases the hammer that hits the shell, and kaboom. It's still a little bit clanky, but it's PLA, you know? It's green PLA, which means good to go. So I'm gonna go and machine this out of brass and hope it works. La saga. Oh no. Did I just break? Yes, I did. The reloading mechanism is thus ready. Let me show you its features. Sure. The hammer that strikes this pin that then strikes the primer on the shell, it's held in place by a simple trigger mechanism. The locking part of it, it's stuck in place until the axe hits, the impact moves it forward, which unlocks the hammer and kabam. When I move the lever up, it pushes the hammer into its locked and loaded position. It tilts the base so it's easier to remove the spent shell. I can then reload a new shell, lower the platform, and this is my favorite part, if you push the sliders back, it locks the platform in place so the nasty pressure doesn't come out the wrong end, being the wrong end my face. The mechanism is now locked, loaded, and ready to shoot. Jesus Christ. I prepared 30 shells, it should be good enough for now, and I guess that's it, it's time. Let's rock and roll. Oh, it cracked it. It didn't blew open, but it cracked it. A small one. Three, two, one. Oh, he's pulling the X out. We got something. Can you see that? Look. Nice. It opened it, but he's not blowing it out completely. Oh. Yep, I just misfired the axe in my hands. Luckily, no pressure, no explosion. By the way, uh, that's my older brother. He was the only person that I was able to convince to help me with this dangerous activity because he fears nothing. This guy once ran full speed down a cliff with no hesitation. Okay, that's a bad example because I was the one that pushed him, but you know what I mean. Just to do a test, let's try this. What? Yeah, that happened. I guess everything I touch is bound to become a rocket? But seriously, uh, that was super dangerous and I got lucky. Luck protects the fools. What I think it happened was by making the axe less wide, I unintentionally made the internal volume of the axe smaller, which means um, it builds much more pressure and that pressure needs to go somewhere. Trust me, pressure always goes somewhere. 
Anyway, I'm taking a lunch break and then I'm fitting the mechanism on the old axe. Oh yeah, the mechanism survived. I'm surprised myself. Maybe it's because it landed on the bushes and not on my hard knuckle head. Seriously, don't try this at home. I can feel my life expectancy shortening by the minute. Three, two, one. Tres, dois, um. Gods of the explosions, help me on this demand! <laughs> we are back! Tres, dois, um... Let's -a go! Aim! and shoot. It's as simple as that. Nope. Boom ba ba boom ba ya. Ooh. Three, two, one. Yes. Oh yes. Ah, this never gets old. It's so good. It's, I feel so powerful. Let's try another one. Three, two, one. Oh, it opened it too much. Oh, it opened. It opened. Ah, come on. There you go. Dude! It went... Oh my god, it's so far away! Jesus! Yes! <laughs> Buenas tardes, Raimundo. Editing Joel here. So, I've been looking at the footage from the test the entire day, and I think I figured something out. I think there's three main reasons why some of the logs don't completely blow apart. Being that the wood itself, the timing, and the penetration. I told you it was important. If I strike the log with too much force, the penetration opens a big crack and the gases don't seal properly and escape. If it's too little, the axe jumps out. Same goes for timing. With the new mechanism, I have the constant force of the spring, but depending on how hard I hit the log, the explosion goes off sooner or later. The best is to go off as soon as the blade gets in the wood, because the momentum from the swing keeps it from coming back up. If it happens too late, the axe jumps out. If it happens too soon, the axe doesn't even get in. About the wood, and I guess anyone that knows their wood knows what I'm about to say. I got lucky the first time around, because without knowing, I chose one of the easiest types of wood to split. Pine wood. Pine wood has a low density, straight grain and almost no knots. This time, purely on accident, I got a lot of Tasmanian bluegum eucalyptus, which is super hard, super dense, has interlocked grain and a lot of knots. These are not even my words, I'm reading it from Wikipedia. I can't. I can't get the axe in. I tried so many times to split one of these. I cannot tell you how many shells I spent, but the axe would not go in. At the time I didn't know why, so I got frustrated and I came up with this dumb solution. I got the blade in the lock first and then used the wire to pull the trigger. And you know what? It still didn't break. Frustrated, I hit the log with all my might and got the blade really stuck in. And like I said before, the pressure needs to go somewhere. And it did. Yeah, that wood is hard. And if it sounds like I'm coming up with excuses, well, I am. But also, I don't want to give up. Trust me. The one thing that I want to see the most right now is one of those massive logs just split apart like chopsticks. Those eucalyptus just flying apart like they've grown wings. So, pardon my rudeness, but right now, I don't even care if you guys want to see it. I'm making a version 3, and trust me, the eucalyptus are not the only one that should be worried. I'll be back.
And remember, tomatoes are disgusting.